Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sarah Horbakowitz. We're getting straight into some developing news out of Wynn. State police say at least 10 people were shot last night. One person died and nine people are hurt. Here's what we know so far. Officials report shots started around 10 last night at a block party near the corner of Williams Avenue and Martin Luther King Street. According to neighbors, the block party was supposed to promote unity within the neighborhood. Two victims were reported to be hit by vehicles at the scene. A 27 year old Wynn resident died in the hospital after the shooting. Again, there were at least nine others hurt, their ages ranging from 24 to 49. The investigation is still ongoing. All new tonight at 10, we hear from the Pulaski County Sheriff Eric Higgins for the first time since the new Netflix series Unlocked came out. A series about a jail experiment to see if inmates could manage themselves. THV 11's Rebecca Brown joins us now live in studio. Rebecca, you heard from the sheriff tonight. What did he have to say? Well, Sarah, the biggest takeaway Sheriff Higgins wants this experiment to do is to reduce the recidivism rate and to empower inmates to make a positive impact on the community. Can I take a unit that, that represents the Placid County Regional Detention Facility and can I transform it? For many of us, the hottest show on Netflix is giving us our first look behind bars. No locks and no officers. And let y'all be a community. <laughs> The series follows 46 unguarded inmates to see if they could govern themselves. On Sunday, Sheriff Eric Higgins participated in a Q&A in Jacksonville organized by the NAACP to address any comments. Thank you for, for allowing that glimpse of transparency, not just from what you want to do, but what you are able to do. And questions. One, I want to know how your decision to do this program actually affects you circling around of why he chose to agree to this experiment. I see their desire to do right, their desire to be a part of our community and to be accepted. We, we, we can't just be mad at them for life. The president of the NAACP Jacksonville branch, Barry Jefferson, calling this experiment innovative and just what we needed. We can change that, that dynamic of jail on how people go and when they get released that they won't come back. That's what it's all about. Sheriff Higgins goes on to say 14,000 individuals were booked in their jail last year. So if we want to reduce the crime rate in our community, it has to start by addressing the individual. And if you can do that on a micro level in a jail with people you don't care about or, or didn't initially care about, and if you take that with you when you go to the broader community, then maybe you realize that you are empowered. You can have a positive impact on your neighborhood on your family. Now Rebecca joins us and this series was filmed about a year ago. So the question I have to ask, what's been going on since? Well, Sarah, like you said, it was filmed a year ago. So they have a unit called H unit on the series. Now the sheriff tells me that the unit is the safest facility in the jail and they have kept the doors unlocked since then. All right, definitely an experiment that saw results, I guess. All of that I know is on Netflix and a lot of people are talking about it. Thanks, Rebecca. Well, a good Sunday evening. Tom Brandon in for Samoa Thomas tonight. Hope you had a great weekend. It was beautiful out there. Lots of sunshine. It was a little bit breezy, but things are going to change this week. An active weather pattern and more rain chances. So here's what your Monday planner looks like. We're still going to top out in the lower 80s tomorrow, but more cloud cover than sun. And with low level moisture increasing, it will feel a little bit more humid for your Monday. Here at tomorrow's high temperature statewide, we're looking at upper 70s and low to possibly mid 80s. And it all depends depends on the amount of sunshine that you may receive. Some stormy weather in the forecast, more rain chances this week. We'll talk about those rain chances here in just a few minutes. Sarah. Iran launched over 350 threats, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, rockets, and suicide drones towards Israel and also other countries in the region could have got that threat on the way. That was Israel Chief Military Spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari. He went on to say that Iran doesn't just pose a threat to Israel, but to the entire Middle East. Right now, Israel is weighing how to respond a day after Iran launched drones and missiles directly towards Israeli territory in a historic attack. Christian Benavidez reports. 
this gift. New video released by Israeli Defense Forces shows how fighter jets intercepted Iranian drones and missiles headed towards Israel. In all, 99% of weapons were intercepted by Israel, the U.S., the United Kingdom and Jordan as they lit up the night sky. Iran and its proxies launched approximately 350 suicide drones, cruise missiles and ballistic missiles and rockets from Iran, Iraq, Yemen and Hezbollah in Lebanon. Look at the size and the scale, the scope of what they fired at Israel from Iran proper. You know, more than 300 missiles and drones. They wanted to cause damage, no question about that. But they were utterly unsuccessful in doing so. Following the attack, President Joe Biden held a phone call with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. CBS News has learned Biden told Netanyahu that the U.S. would not participate in a reprisal strike on Iran. The president's made it clear we're not looking for a war with Iran, we're not looking for a broader regional conflict, and everything we've been doing since the 7th has been designed to prevent that outcome. President Biden met with other G7 leaders via teleconference Sunday over Iran's unprecedented attack, which was in response to an Israeli airstrike to Iran's embassy in Syria. Biden is under increasing pressure over Israel's response in Gaza to the October 7th attack and is hoping to avoid escalation to a wider regional conflict. A CBS News poll done prior to the Iranian strikes showed just 33% of Americans approve of President Biden's handling of the conflict. Christian Benavides, CBS News. Iran's mission to the U.N. wrote on social media that they do not plan any further attacks and warned the U.S. not to get involved. The murder trial for Keyshawn Smith is set to begin tomorrow. This comes after the trial being delayed twice. Smith is accused of killing Pine Bluff police detective Kevin Collins in 2020. He also faces battery charges for shooting another officer. The trial was originally scheduled for last September, but was delayed after a 12 person jury couldn't be filled. It was then pushed to this past January, but the prosecution presented new evidence, leading the defense to request more time time to review it. Smith faces life without the possibility of parole. Meanwhile, Arkansas's fiscal session is set to resume tomorrow afternoon. Some of the major topics this particular session includes education, crime and health care, something Governor Sanders stressed during her first state of the state address last week. We are building a better, a safer and a stronger Arkansas. Our priorities are reflected in the budget. Went on to say that this year's budget increases spending by only 1.76% and a majority of that going to education and school vouchers. Secretary of Education Jacob Oliva supported the focus. We make sure that as we put forth the state budget for education, we have the right amount in there for parents that want to be a part of the Freedom Accounts. Another estimated $3.8 million would go towards state police. The final day to file your taxes is tomorrow unless you request an extension. If you do need to file an extension, you can go to irs.gov and fill out the appropriate form. Most Americans have until Monday, April 15th tomorrow to submit their returns or request that extension. The IRS says the majority of people who qualify for refunds will see them within 21 days. And if you owe the IRS but can't pay by the 15th, the IRS says you can step up an installment plan on their website. Also starting tomorrow, the southbound lane of North Rodney Parham Road between Buff Lane and Pleasant Valley Drive will be closed for an entire month for construction. Manish Krishan, assistant director of Little Rock Public Works, is urging drivers to be safe and aware. Uh, safety is most important both for uh, commuters as well as our construction workers out there. So uh, keep an eye out for signs, uh, follow the instructions out there and drive slowly through the construction areas. Then we've been working along with our utility companies to get those relocations done uh, and then weather delays and other things like that. But we're trying to do our best. Monday's construction is set to start at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And still ahead, turning heads and breaking barriers. We're introducing you to a seven-year-old girl who's making her name in the rodeo scene. How she's literally grabbing life by the horns after the break.
Well, after what was a beautiful weekend, clouds are going to begin to roll back in tomorrow. In fact, clouds tonight may keep the temperatures up in the 60s by tomorrow morning. With the clouds, there's a rain chance. Some storms are possible. I'll talk about the timing of those storms when we come back.